what we're going to talk about now is how we use one of 3D Studio Max's uh, parametric 2D shapes to create this fantastic looking 3D text that we've got here that's adorning the top of these two pillars. It's a great little um, parametric primitive there, the 2D one, along with a an extrude and a bend modifier really gives us a lot of power and a lot of flexibility as to what we can really create with this package. So in order to start doing something like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you right the way back from the basics and I'm just going to hit the reset button. So there we go, that's reset. And I'm just going to maximize my front viewport as well and just pull back a bit so I can see what's going on. And in order to put text on the screen, I'm going to go to my shapes option here and I'm going to click on text and I'm just going to click once within my viewport. And that's going to give me just my default text in Arial that says max text. So in order to edit that, I'm going to go to my modify tab and I'm going to highlight the text option. And I'm going to type something different. Obviously, I don't want to have just max text there all the time. So I'm going to say 3ds max. Uh, what do we say? Essential skills. There we go. Now, I've got my text. That all looks very pretty, but it's not necessarily. In fact, I don't want a capital K in there, do I? Let's take that out. Um, I don't necessarily want it in the Arial font. Arial's fine if you're writing Word documents, but it's not much good for anything else. So I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to pick from any one of the fonts that I've got here. Now, it may well be that you, you're you not really quite sure which font it is that you want. So you know you, what you can do with this is you can just scroll down, pick one almost at random. There we go. And I can use my arrow keys now. And what I'm doing here is I'm really just sort of cycling through each one of these fonts until I find the one that I like and the one that I'm looking for. Now, when I've found what I'm looking for, which is this Harrington font, which I really rather quite like. I'm using this in, a, in another project at the moment. It's got a lovely little feel to it there, actually. It's really rather quite nice. What I can do is I can move over into my perspective view. And you can see here, this is a dark purple color which doesn't really show up very well against my backdrop here so what I'll do is I'll come up here to the color box just click on that and I'll give that a much lighter color for the moment there we go that's easier to see isn't it so I've got my text I've got my font I can play around with the size of it if I want to I can play around with the kerning as well which is the space between each letter so I can really kind of pull that back in if I want to. If I want to make that look and feel a little bit cramped, I can do. And I can spread it back out again. If I had multi-line text, which is very easy to have, I can also change the leading, which is the space between each one of the lines here. There we go. Let's just keep doing that. There we go. So we can really sort of bunch this text up if we want to. Or we could just delete each one of these lines and get rid of them. There we go. So now I've got my 2D text and I've pretty much got you know, the, the words that I want. I've got the font that I want. Now it's time to take this and turn it from 3D text and turn it into a 3D text object. So what I'll do is I'll come up here to my modify list. I'll go to my drop down. And I'm going to go right the way to, where was it? I was going to say extrude then, but I've gone straight past it. There we go, extrude. And I'm going to put a value of, I don't know, about 12 into there. And lo and behold, rather suspiciously, that's given me this fantastic extrude on here. Looks absolutely brilliant. I really like, like that, really like that a lot. So that's given me my basic 3D text. Now the next thing for me to do is to generate some mapping coordinates on that, which is what I should do. Uh, maybe if I press F4 here, I can add a couple of segments into the height there. There we go, just so I can bend that and there's a little bit of uh, room for flexibility. And what I'll now do is I'll now apply another modifier, which was the bend. I'm going to put that in the X direction 
at minus 90, just as a rough guess. And I'm going to give that a negative bend value. And as you can see here, if I pull that round to about 180. Uh, let's just keep clicking away here until I get to 180. There we go. We've got our really rather nice looking text. Almost looking as if it should go above uh, the top of a wrought iron gate or something like that. It should really be sort of like John Cole and Sons or something, I don't know. Uh, really nice font. I like it a lot. Very, very easy to do. Very, very easy to produce. And one of the advantages that we have, because we've worked procedurally here, over here in our um, in our modify list, if I go back to text and I make sure I've got my show end result on, I can always at any point come in and just add a little something extra into this. 2010, there you go. And we've just added in real time a piece of 2D text that because we've got an extrude and a bend, it just went into that bend, into the text absolutely perfectly in the correct type font exactly how it should be. It's as simple as that, it's as easy as that to produce. If you're looking to have sort of bevels on the edges of this text, what I would say is flick forward to uh, the materials section of these tutorials and you'll find in there um, uh, one of the buttons in one of the materials that will tell you about it's the uh, uh, mental ray architecture and design materials. There's a, a button in there that will allow you to have pseudo beveling on the edges so you don't have to worry about putting it in your geometry. Really nice, really simple, really great way of doing things. And of course you also have the advantage that should you have completely forgotten that you're meant to be using 3ds Max 2011 that you can actually go back and uh, should you be a complete doofus change it to 2011 essential skills which is in fact what it should have been in the first place.